Hey everyone, this is Satori D, and I have a special episode of the Imaginarium. I had a really good meeting with Pia Mancini from Open Collective. We talked about the possibility of Open Collective helping the Imaginarium move forward in manifesting our digital dreams. First, I'm going to play a clip of Pia talking about what Open Collective is and how they started from Douglas Rushkoff's um, Team Human. I would like to thank Pia and Douglas for letting me use this footage to give you some context of what we're talking about. Then afterwards, we'll have the kind of private meeting that we had talking about what Open Collective could do for um, helping making transparent funding for Infinite Imaginarium projects, ideas, art. And uh, I'm really excited where we're moving forward. And I encourage everybody to listen and not only listen, but help um, Infinite Imaginarium grow. We're going to start some funding. But even that, just listening to our stuff, liking our stuff, giving us feedback, coming in on shows. Um, If you're really interested, have you guys come into our Lumio, pitch ideas, give us feedback on ideas, help us campaign, and make a little bit of magic happen, and have some fun along the way. Thank you very much. This is Satori D, and enjoy the show. So Open Collective started about a year and a couple of months ago, and the goal was to enable what we call the internet generation organizations. So organizations that are groups of people that have a shared purpose or a shared mission, but they're not either territorially based, so open source projects, for example, or large social and political movements that are global, or they have, they can't really fit into the assumptions that governments have for organizations. So they can't really form a 501c3 or they can't have an LLC because... It's not in their nature. They don't want to have a conversation about equity. They don't care who the president is or they have their side projects, right? So there's a lot of organizations that we realized and that we had ourselves that we couldn't fund because if we we didn't have a legal entity, we couldn't have a bank account. So we couldn't have collective funding. Yes, someone could give me money as an individual, but it didn't belong to me. You know, it belonged to the community. How we fund structure and power these kinds of organizations is like what we set out to do. What are like examples of the kinds of communities that you wanted to do this for? So the first one was political parties was the first one, one of the first ones. That was from my experience building a political party. We were trying to have a strong impact on a local government. We built a political party to do it and obviously the government wasn't interested in us (laughs) doing anything locally. So they didn't allow our party, like they wouldn't approve our legal entity. So we couldn't have funding, so we couldn't campaign. And that's terribly unfair. It's like you're trying to, you're asking to the status quo for permission to change the status quo. Like they have no incentives in helping you out, right? And there's no other way. Yes, we could have used, although this was 2013, so I don't even know if we could have properly used Bitcoin, right? Or any cryptocurrency. This is not now. So that's sort of one of the examples that made us think about how we can build a platform or infrastructure for these types of organizations Mm -hmm. to thrive and, you know, create a whole new economy and and collaborate. And so that was one of them. The second one was a movement in Brussels called um, the Startup Manifesto. And it was a movement of people that just wanted to make sure that the startup ecosystem in Brussels sort of sucked a little bit less. They had like a thousand people that wanted to contribute and they started doing all of these things and they put together a best practices, a kind of white paper, they presented it to the government, like they were super successful. And one day they decided to print stickers and they're like, all right, great, who's going to pay for the stickers? Uh, You know, we're all, you know, half of us are hackers, we'll just do a website, right, to collect money and we'll use that money to print stickers. And then they realized they didn't have a bank account and they couldn't have a bank account because they were just a group of people that wanted to do something, no legal entity behind it. And they can't just use one of their bank accounts? They can, but that has tax implications for the individual. The money doesn't really belong to the community if it's owned by someone. And also there's an issue of trust and transparency that it's, it's a burden, right? 
Right, it's, like with this show, with Team Human. So we're trying to get uh, listeners to make donations. And we put, oh, okay, we'll put a PayPal link on there. Well, who's PayPal? So it's my PayPal account. So then I take the money out and then put it in a, you know, yeah. special account or something. But, yeah. Or I could do what? Hire a lawyer and create an LLC? There you go. But I'm not a for-profit thing. So mm -hmm. I can get a 501c3. And how much is that going to cost? And how long is it going to take for you to, to, to for get the IRS that. to get that, right? Right. This is another case. We actually have um, a publication. It's called Between the Wires, and they do public, they do interviews for programmers. So it's mostly very very tech. Same story. Like the founder, uh, the girl that leads it, she's like, I don't want to use my bank account. Like that doesn't seem right. Like and it's a responsibility. Mm -hmm. And we made them a collective, and now they have their dedicated page. So the way Open Collective works, it's a platform where we can create collectives, or collectives create themselves actually. And then underneath that platform is a network of host organizations that act as their fiscal sponsors. From different countries. From different countries, in different verticals. And we're actually now playing with the idea of having wallets, like a Bitcoin wallet or an Ether mm -hmm. wallet being a host as well. The concept is that underneath there's this network of host organizations. So now you can, boom, create your collective, start receiving funding. All the transactions are transparent, so you share your ledger. What we also strive to do is to sort of remove the complexities of dealing with money and talking about money mm -hmm. by making all the transactions transparent by design. Like the only way of removing money from your collective is submitting an expense for being uh -huh. reimbursed or an invoice that the core team has to approve, and then the host pays. All of that is transparent, so you, you can see who, who make the donation, what are you um, using that money for, Many collectives are also starting to, to show their expenses. They don't even have money. They don't have donations. But they're like, we just want to show what it takes right. to do what we do. And we shouldn't run with the cost without at least other people being aware that what we do implies all of this well, right. effort. Now you start to cost. document. Exactly. We so, do have expenses. We're not just pocketing exactly, this. Exactly, exactly. Right. And, and in, in, in some way, what we, what we think is going to happen is like what happened with like sharing code at the beginning at the beginning was just putting your code out there right? right but that enabled a new kind of collaboration that didn't exist yet until you could actually show your code so by showing your ledger by making your your costs transparent what we hope to see and what we think we'll see is new types of collaboration between collectives that didn't exist before because no one knew so it's almost like a financial github exactly yeah, yeah. that's a good uh, yeah I wanted to play that clip for you to kind of give you context for what I referred to a lot in our meeting and what inspired me to reach out to Pia and she was so nice to give me some of her time and hear out what we're doing and kind of give us a, a chance to host us and to experiment with us. But um, we go into details of that in our meeting and I want to share that with everybody, the context and also the more nuts and bolts of our meeting to be open with our attention with Infinite Imaginarium and to really be hold into this um, being transparent and open with our artist collective known as Infinite Imaginarium because we have a lot of big plans and a lot of interesting work that we want to do and we want to reach out first to our uh, Minds community and for everybody that supports us. Thank you. And enjoyed um, this meeting that I had with Pia from Open Collective. And if you haven't uh, listened to Douglas Rushcott's Team Human, give it a shot. It's something that I listen to a lot and gives me a lot of inspiration. Thanks. Um, I, uh, I remember now. Sorry. I'm just, it's very, it's a bit late for me. It's like, I'm in Europe, so it's uh, <laughs> oh. 8, 8 30 at night, and I have like, I had like a massive long day, so. Like at the tail end of my uh, brain capacity. Yeah, no, I'm really no problem. Sorry that. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so tell me, I looked at your email and I think it would open collective would definitely work. For the moment, it seems like you guys don't have a legal entity, right? No, so we don't. That was part of the of the issue. Yeah, the so, issue. Um, yeah. yeah. No, you go. Yeah, I was gonna just say the issue was that one of our members. He has his own business and he was like, oh, let's do a documentary. But to do that, we're going to need to get funds. Let's start a nonprofit. And I was like, OK, that sounds cool. And we started working on it. And then I was kind of getting overwhelmed with it. And he was like, oh, mm -hmm. don't, don't worry. We'll just kind of 
cut and paste my own business and we'll curtail it to to our adventure and i'm like okay that sounds cool and but then he got busy with his business and he's been mia for like two months and i was like oh okay so then that's when i started listening to the team human thing and Mm -hmm. we're basically just a community of artists that want to work collaboratively together we started on minds we like to do most of our stuff on minds.com but we we have a we started our pot maniac account we do youtube a little bit and we branch out from there but our main hub is minds.com and i have a pretty good mm-hmm. relationship with bill uh, recently just yesterday i had a show slash meeting with him and we we're the first ones to test out the subdomain and when we were first tested out the subdomain so we'll have all the capabilities of minds.com basically our own social networking and i was like oh, i don't know what we're going to use this for but the more and more mm-hmm. I started thinking about it, I was like, oh, we'll use it as a creative, virtual creative workspace. So we're kind of basically a creative incubator where people pitch ideas. Like, for instance, my friend had the idea for a documentary. I have an idea for like a web series. Uh, my friend wants to start her own little podcast or whatever it is that people want to pitch because we have a lot. Mm-hmm. Our community was scattered with different artists and I've been trying to bring them together so we could work on different projects we have some people that are photographers some people are video editors some people that are programmers whatever it is and i always find it cool and exciting when we all come together and we each have our own unique perspective but also our own skills and passion and i'm trying to harness that more and more and we want to do bigger projects like for instance we were talking to bill and we had this kind of like idea of having this bus that kind of like goes around and as well first two of our members wanted to focus in on kids and doing these kind of like um, creative workshops with them whether it's to grow vegetables like i told them for instance my story i have these brunches where i have uh, my own local community kind of like comes over because i used to be i used to work at the school and we had this really good community but when i left the community kind of like died down and i didn't want to lose touch with Mm -hmm. them so I started having brunches because I started focusing on um, catering and doing this farmer's market in Studio City. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. I had them all over and we would talk. And then I remember the, my niece, she was looking at my garden and she was like, what's that? That's a carrot. She's like, that's not a carrot. I was like, no, it's a real carrot. <laughs> that's what carrots look like. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> what a real carrot looks like. And I pulled it out of the ground and her eyes just went crazy. And then the excitement that the little kid had about oh what what is that and like she started like pulling up everything and wanted to know everything and like just simple things like that will be exciting and fun like we had we have all these different ideas and so now we're taking it seriously and we're looking at things to help fund certain projects when we have a really good idea and we started using lumio to kind of more uh, work collaboratively and make decisions cool. when we when we start pitching ideas so that's where mm-hmm. we are right now cool um, so yeah, it sounds like a case that we can really take on board. Where are you guys um, based? More or less here on the West Coast in California. Ma- right. Majority. I'm here in LA. Uh, my other uh-huh. friend that's really active, she's in the Bay Area, but she kind of like rotates from going from LA to San Francisco. Like right now she's in Berkeley, but in the seventh, she's coming back down here and we're going to like okay. work on more filming and talking more about we're making like our plan of our roadmap to to imaginarium mm-hmm. okay so i mean it's definitely seems like we can um host you so host means this open collective has like two parts to it one of it is the platform that has the crowdfunding tools and transparent ledger to show where you're spending the funding and who's you know who's paying for who's receiving reimbursements and for what, or who, you know, who the community is paying and things like that. So it's, everything is transparent. It's transparent by design. The only way of getting money in and out of the system is if it gets recorded and that's public information. The invoices and receipts themselves are not because they have personal information, obviously, but the concept and the amount and who's receiving the money is public. So that's kind of the platform level. And there we, we can create a collective for Imaginarium 
you guys can have um, your own tier. So if you want to have members or you, ha- you want to have backers and sponsors or like different approaches, we're releasing soon, on well, September, a feature for rewards. So you can do campaigns for funding, say you want to do a documentary and so you're going to like create more of a Kickstarter kind of campaign, right? When you say like you have pledges or things like that. All of that is the platform side. But then what Open Collective offers is a fiscal sponsorship also option. So we would, the money that your members or backers or sponsors send to you through your, your collective page goes to Open Collective's bank account because Open Collective is your fiscal sponsor. And so what we do is we essentially receive the funding for you if you don't have an organization or if you do not want to use your personal bank account. And then we reimburse the expenses or the invoices that you submit. So that's what we do in general for open source collectives, all open source projects, and some a couple of meetups. And, you know, Imaginarium is kind of an edge case for us because we're more focused on open source, but we want to attract that community more. And so, and since your budget is pretty small, then we are kind of comfortable. The reason is that because we receive the funding for you, like we are responsible for that money, right? And we're responsible for the activities that your collective does. So we do open source by default because we see online on GitHub what's going on. It's very easy for us to see where the money is going and that the project actually exists. Um, but in this case, like we'll, we'd like to try it anyway and kind of um, host you on the platform until you decide if you want to create a legal entity. Are you following until uh, up to now? Do you have a question? You, you answered a lot of my questions because right now we're very small and we just need, I, I have a, we're having issues, I guess, with what I was kind of messaging in the email of like, who's going to pay for it, what account, and like I said, our domain name, and then he hasn't been around for a while. <laughs> we had all these, these right. little things, and I was just like, oh. Like, we had this one issue, too. Like, we commissioned this one of our friends that's not a core member. That come, we have this outer member group mm-hmm. that comes that flows in and out. And we kind of, like, commissioned a song. And I wasn't, I guess, like, the backer, but I was, like, the creative director for the song. So me and him were talking, mm-hmm. and the other guy was supposed to handle the payment, and so when it came down to that, it was, I didn't like, and it was very small, but for me, I'd rather it all be out there in the open so there's no miscommunication and we don't have like, oh, I thought I was going to get paid. I was like, yeah, I thought so too. Uh, Kevin has right, to right. deal with it. And I was just like, oh, this is, I don't want moving forward for like, I want everything to be out in the open. I want, if you have a good idea and we have funds, we vote on it. It gets green lighted. The funds are there. As long as you know you do the work, I think you should get paid for it. As long as everybody agrees and we have the funds for it, that's basically how I want to handle the finances. And like I said, I kind of want Infinite Imaginarium to always kind of be this open collective of artists for anybody to come in and out. And like I said, like a creative incubator. So like later, you know, I have certain ideas of my own like my i do these uh like short story that maybe i want to turn into something but later then i would turn that into my own project and maybe i take a couple of my members and then we create our own production company but you know i want infinite imaginarium to kind of be for anybody and everybody who wants to say play around and uh, incubate ideas and if something grows good, then you can kind of like keep it and you could fork yourself off and do your own thing. But because we're small, but the minor issues that I see going down in the future is that, you know, we have somebody in London that she's really active. So like we had those kind of issues, like like the guy in Canada, we had people in Australia. We want to yeah, keep I mean, it fluid like that, too. Right. That, that makes a lot of sense. And that's. That's kind of the problem that we set out to solve. Um, I mean, in the future, ideally, you guys would have like uh, some sort of virtual account that we would provide you with for all of you. That's the next step. Um, at the moment, 
we need to do that like with, with fiscal sponsorship essentially we need to receive the money for you but it's okay if you if people from around the world make expenses we use uh, paypal to to send the the payments or the the reimbursements and i think it makes sense that you, you guys use something like lumio to make decisions and then the way the system works is that someone submits an expense and then someone from the community needs to approve it so we have a social club on the platform and what they do is they make all the discussion and decision about expenses on Lumio and then, you know, that gets approved on Open Collective. Like in the future, you would be able to do that on Open Collective as well. Maybe not the, the discussion part, but at least you could comment on expenses. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, you could also do it from your own bank account if you wanted to connect uh, Stripe and PayPal to to your collective and receive the money and disperse it. It would be cheaper, but you would have to, you would run with the responsibility of managing the money. Yeah. And I mean, eventually, maybe we we do that. And that's why what I said when I was listening to your podcast with uh, Douglas Rushkar and T-Human, and when you're talking about communities and groups that are kind of like all around the world and trying to help solve that problem and I was like oh shoot like on a small little instance we had that problem or I had that problem yeah, yeah. that sounds no, interesting and everyone everyone does like, and that's why we set out to do this because everyone has the same kind of problems and it's like the analogy we use is like having one legal entity per project like like Imaginarium is like having one server per content online this is pretty much the same right it's, it's insane that's what we're required to have. And so there is no sharing of knowledge. There is not um, pooling of resources. There's not neutralizing. And it's just highly inefficient. And it saps the energy of people like you that you should be doing what you like instead of, you know, talking to accountants and lawyers. Anyway, so that's, that's sorry for the rant, but that's more or less the, the, that's kind of the problem that we set out to, um, to solve. So essentially what, what would happen is that you create your collective if you haven't yet and then we host it, we host it for you. You can immediately start receiving funding. You would submit expenses and then get them approved. And then the host that in this case is Open Collective, we reimburse expenses every Friday and we only pay for approved expenses. And, and if it's an invoice, um, all of this is information is online anyway, but if you say you're gonna submit an invoice for your time work doing a documentary, it has to be like a proper invoice with your address and because it goes in our in our books. Okay. Um, yeah. And then that's it, essentially. Really, the things that you can expense are things that are related to your mission. So you would be able to expense hiring filming equipment, but you wouldn't be able to expense, I don't know, clothes or, you know, your rent or things like that. Okay, that's, that sounds good. Yeah, th then once we created... I mean, we're, we're, we're working on adding better functionality on the front end for collectives to be able to create these rewards and manage the, your own tiers. But for the moment, we need to do that. So I said, me, look, we're going to have a membership system where everyone who's part of the collective is going to put $10, $20, $50, whatever you decide per month. And then we're going to use that funding to pay for, you know, this things that we're doing or these activities or we're going to pay for plane tickets for everyone to come together and do a meetup or whatever you decide or you can have sponsors and you say like look my you know company or whatever wants to sponsor this so they just put they have a subscription of a hundred dollars per month or five hundred dollars per month or things like that um so that's pretty much how it's organized yeah that sounds good just uh, definitely to the reason why I kind of very interested in that because me personally and I, I kind of even though we we don't do necessarily programming we do have an idea for an app that later we, we might do but like for instance back in high school I went to a technical high school and I, mm -hmm. I majored in computer science and ever since I read the cathedral and the bazaar I've always been mm -hmm. in, interested in working with the model of the bazaar and having open source philosophy even when yeah, i was totally. so um that's also to me personally why i kind of want to do this and hopefully you know learn more from you guys and grow and and experiment and all that kind of stuff yeah that's great so um just just to make sure that that uh, you know the fees so 
so the platform fees with hosting is 10% of the money that you receive through the platform. You don't pay anything unless we're helping you fund. So there is no fee for having your collective app as much as you can, as, as long as you want. It's just we, we only take a fee when you receive uh, donations. And then on top of that, though, there are like the processing fees, um, Stripe and PayPal. So if you would want to host the collective yourself and use your bank account, then fees are 5% only because we don't run with the administrative costs and we don't run with the responsibility of the funding. Just want to make sure that, that those yeah, two yeah, options are available for you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Um, and then so next steps would be to go to opencollective.com slash create and create your collective. Just add everyone, anyone that you want as a, as a core member. So core members can log in and edit the collective content. Um, you can use Markdown. Once you do it, it's going to edit and add videos or, or GIFs or whatever, or links. You can use uh, Markdown to do it. And then everyone who's a core contributor can approve or reject expenses, um, but only the host can pay for them. And then everyone else who's giving you um, support, it's a backer. And then anyone can submit an expense. They don't need to be part of your collective. It's very open in that way. If someone feels that they did something for your collective, even if they're not a member, they can submit an expense. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. But then you can decide if you approve it or not. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. It's kind of... Okay, awesome. What? What? Tell me. No, it was kind of what I was gathering from my own little research. I, I listened to uh, another talk that you had on um, tech chat or whatever and reading. It's kind of what I figured. Okay, cool. Well, go ahead and create it. We'll just, we'll approve it. And then we'll take it from there. And whatever, you know, if you didn't want to change the tiers or think, figure out a different model or try experiment, just let me know. We're also open source. So if you want to, you know, brush up on those technical skills and there's something that you want <laughs> to do, uh, just go ahead and, and you know, uh, submit a, a pull request. Okay, cool. Yeah, thank, right. thank you a lot for your time and um, we'll definitely set it up and if I have any questions, I'll, I'll email you. That's but, good. But yeah, I also joined the, the Slack, so I, I also too. Yeah, just ping me, yeah, just ping me there or, or by mail, whatever. Okay, cool. Thank you. All right, have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye.